Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Halatau, which is a new game from Uwe Rosenberg, which is all about farming and the farming farmers that do it. We are going to be placing workers, that's these blue cubes, on this main board to get sheep, to get resources, to plant things, to breed sheep, all sorts of stuff. And we will be bringing it down here, planting crops, getting more stuff, playing these cards. And the ultimate goal is to give goods to these craftsmen over here, move them along, and once all of them have moved along a space, this great big cottage will you know, grind over and give us more workers, eventually give us points, and reveal the beautiful village that we are creating and beyond. I'm playing a two-player game today against Little Glass Marty. The thing that changes for two players is that normally the whole board would start out with a worker at the bottom of each space, we just have half of it. There's a card that determines uh, which two start empty. And at the end of every round, normally, the top row of each action space, you see these action spaces have got a space for one worker, then two, then three. The more people that want to do it, the more expensive it's going to be. Uh, they don't all clear off at the end of the round, just the top row does. But in a two-player game, only the top row of two sections, two quadrants of the board will clear away. Otherwise, it's largely the same, so no matter what you're playing, uh, you know, in, in three players, three of them are going to clear out, in one player, only one of them is going to clear out. The actual stuff we're doing, though, you should get an idea, no matter what player account you want to play it at. Uh, before we get started, there is a static camera and a handheld camera, so you can switch between them at your preference, high static cameras, and uh, you can just turn on the Klingon subtitles. If I make any mistakes, they'll be corrected there, and if you'd like to help me keep making playthroughs like this, because games like Halito don't come cheap, then it's patreon.com forward slash slickerdrips, and any support there would be massively appreciated. So if we just look at my area here, we start out in the same position, really. We have one each of, I'm going to get this wrong, aren't I? Barley, rye, and flax is, I believe, what those three things are. Uh, or spades, wheat, and dark wheat. <laughs> we start off with those in our inventory. Uh, you can see from this how many of each resource you have. So they are markers rather than you having a piece for every resource you get. When I get more of something, I'll just slide it up there. If I get more than five, I take another marker then. And markers will be there to show you when things are planted. Because we start with three fields. We can only have eight fields. Basically, there is a column for each field. The number of the row they're in determines how effective they are, how many of a crop you'll get back when you plant it in. We have our main kind of cottage board here that we're in the exact same situation in. Uh, we all start at the very beginning. It tells us how many workers we're going to get. And then we have the stables over here that we have six stable cards on. And this is where our sheep are going to go. It tells us how much stuff is going to cost each round. And it's also going to give us more cards in our hand. We do start off with five cards. It's four of these gateway cards and one points card. So they are basically either have things, so anytime you see this kind of notepad at the top of the page, that means you just have to have the thing that it's asking you about, or be in the situation that it's telling you to be in, and then you'll get the reward at the bottom. Usually some resources, sometimes a bonus card as well. Bonus cards will keep giving you an effect every round. And the points cards need a more difficult thing to be done, but we'll reward you with points at the end of the game. I imagine that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not very many points. There are, there are better points than that, you can see. Uh, Marty, if he gives up, when you see this arrow rather than the notepad, if he gives up five meat, he can get 10 points. So that's an option that he's got in his game. We do have a ton of cards in this game. This is just the gateway cards, and there is a similar number of the stable cards as well. Uh, there are loads of different sets. I am playing with the sets that it recommends for your first game. So the, the simpler sets, I imagine. Although maybe we'll do another another time, a solo game maybe with the, some other sets. But hey, that's all in the future. Let's get to the now. So the round overview. There are 10 steps. Should I just show you the graphics? Maybe that's easier to see if I remember what they all mean. Uh, so number one is where workers come off. They, that doesn't happen in the first round. We have set up the situation for the first round already. The second step is, and don't worry that it's 10 steps, largely a lot of them are just do a quick thing like that. The, the main thing's where we're going to take actions. Four is we're gonna, where we're going to place workers and most of the stuff happens. And nine is where we're going to spend resources to move these buildings along. So step two is remove your leftmost stable card. And I'm just going to put them over here. It does say put them next to your stable board, but I have kind of 
Tetris this around to try and fit best in the static camera. So you take one card off and then take the number of workers that you can see through the window of your cottage. So at the start of the game, we each start with six and you put them on this card. Stage three, another thing that won't happen at the start of the game, I don't think anyway, uh, is your bonus cards will kick off in phase three. Every round, you will get the bonus of a bonus card that you've fulfilled. You don't just draw them and then get the bonus. They will have, you know, let's look at the bottom one. We're never going to get here. So if you had three hides, you could complete this card, slide it under, and every phase three, you will get an extra hide. And at the end of the game, you'll get some points. At the start of the game, we haven't got any bonus cards out, so we can go straight to stage four, which is place your workers. So I have the cockerel, so I am going to go first. Now you have two options when you're placing workers. You can place them onto the action board here, and basically the, the fewer cubes are on here, the cheaper the action is. So if I go to anything over here, it's just going to cost me one worker. All of these actions in the middle have three rows each, getting more expensive, one, two, three. And there are also action spaces for each stack of cards. It can get your card and the first player token. So the first player token can bounce around quite a bit. Whoever gets it last is going to be the first player for the next time that matters. So you can draw cards. There are only two rows of those actions. Your other option is to use as many workers as you like to get tools. They are you know, gone for the round and they get you tools which are going to be vital to moving your buildings around because you'll see these boulders are in the way. You can move a building by paying goods. We'll see that later. Uh, but these boulders get in the way. You need to spend a tool to move each boulder. So you can get by without them, but you're only going to move your buildings one stage each round at the very most. Now going into my cards, you get an idea of what you might like to do. So my points card, it's not worth very much, but I either want seven bonus cards in play. It's a lot, isn't it? Or I want to have one points card already in play. So I can draw more points cards from here. So I can think about getting that. But a little thing that I've seen here is I've got a, a couple of cards that want me to have meat. Uh, this one, the more I, I have, the more tools I can get. And it will give me a bonus card. This one wants me to just have, not give up, just have two meat. And then I can get two clay and a bonus card. This one rewards me with tools, and then once I've got four tools, I can complete this one and get some milk, wool, and clay. So this is a, a nice little thing that's a nice little synergy, maybe, that I could go for. Uh, so I am going to start off, if I want a lot of meat quickly, you go to the butchery, give up a sheep to get four meat and two hide. How do you get sheep? Well, there are two spaces. Well, there are actually three spaces. <laughs> There's the weekly market, get a sheep and a meat. The sheep market, get a sheep and a hide. Or over here, sheep breeding is give up two milk for a sheep or four milk for two sheep. So if I want five meat, one thing that I could do is get a sheep from here. It's going to cost me more workers than over here, but it will get me the fifth one that I need. Then give up the sheep there. And then we'll think about what we're going to do with the rest of the actions. That's kind of my roadmap for stuff. It's costing more workers, but I just like that it would give me that extra meat. So I'm going to go to the weekly market first of all. And I am going to get myself a sheep. Whenever you get sheep, they go in your stables. And you can see from the arrows here, if you get a sheep in round one, it goes on this stable card. And this is basically to indicate that in three rounds time, this sheep is going to die of old age if something isn't done about it. Uh, this sheep doesn't really have to worry about that. And I also get a meat, so that's the same as the other resources. We'll go down here, and I've got one of it, because it's on the bottom row. Marty, I think, is going to start off with... I'd like to do some planting, I think. While these things are free, what does he need? He wants some flax, some wool, milk and wool. He wants wool, basically, so wool come from sheep. But also, he could go to... He could go to small trade here and get milk or wool, get crops, sheep gain an extra round. Now this is how you keep sheep alive longer. So I think maybe he'll start off at the sheep market. He wants, he, he wants the benefit from having a sheep if he's going to go to small trade, so he's going to get a sheep and a hide. Back to me, I am... Um, I can see Marty's got a sheep now, so I might be worried, because these are all in our hands, the cards. They're all secret, so I don't know exactly what he's planning. So I want to not have to waste an extra worker. I am going to... Butcher this poor sheep, I do apologise, and get four meat, so that slides all the way up to five now, and two hides, so grab a piece for that and put them in there. And your cards can be done at any time, even if it's not your turn, any time you want to. 
So I've got five meat now, so there would be no reason to hang on to this card. I've got five meat, so I can gain two tools and get a bonus card. These cards you can just get out of the way. There are cards that concern how many cards you've played, so you want to keep them around somewhere. I'm just going to put them in a pile above the jewelry here, which is another resource we can get. And then I get two tools. Oh, and actually, uh, the meat, I've got two meat and two hide. Not that that matters, it's either or. Uh, I can have two clay and another bonus card. So let's put a clay. I can't grab it. A clay in the two there. And so I've drawn two bonus cards for each of the cards that I've finished now. They can go up there. And so what are my bonus cards? Give up three clay. Every round I would get a rye and a clay, and, three, and I get three points at the end of the game. Uh, if I have three crops of the same type, I can get a hop every round and five points at the end of the game. That's not going to be that difficult, is it? Especially if I want to try and get loads of rye here. If I can get loads of rye, I can get some milk, another bonus card. Maybe I just go all in for cards. Well, if I'm getting a load of tools, building, moving the buildings is going to be useful as well. Now, Marty, let's, let's do some planting while he can here, because this space is empty. There are four spaces in the middle here that concern sowing. Uh, they will let you plant things, get more resources back when we do the harvest at the end of the round, maybe get more fields and some extra resources on top. Uh, this particular one here, fertilizing, it lets you move up to two empty fields into row five and then sow once. At the start of the game, you have a two field, a three field, and a four field. At the end of each round, uh, it's, it's, it's like a rotation system in fields so laying fields fallow not planting anything in them is going to raise their effectiveness for next round everything that's not planted in goes up one and then one of them of your choice goes up an extra one or this one could go up to five for example uh, and everything that's planted in will go down one because you know that was used it's not as effective if you keep using the same field so he is going to choose his two lowest fields to move into row five thanks to his fertilizing action and his card here that wants wool also wants flax, so he is going to plant flax. So you use up one flax, and it's important to remember, uh, you know, if you've got two flax, remember, don't just take it from your two and put it on there. You're only spending one, so you would spend one and then get another resource to plant on there. As it is, he's only got one, so it just goes straight on there, and then in the harvest phase later in the round, he's going to get five back. Over to me, and I was thinking of doing that because I would like loads of wheat. But if I get some tools, I can get some resources that might be nice to give up. I want some more clay. Hmm, maybe I get some more fields. Now over, to, to get clay, there is clay delivery, get clay equal to the round number. Bit rubbish in round one. Uh, get three clay or three crops. Uh, the crops basically are wheat, flax. Not wheat, it's rye, flax, barley, hops. There we go, remembered it. Uh, so you can choose between them. The other goods are animal products. I've separated them. So the ones on the left, they are crops that you can get for that action and you can plant them. Uh, the others you can't. You can't plant sheep. Uh, so three clay or three crops, a new field that will go in your two row and a clay, four clay or a new field value four. And well, we've seen the sheep markets. I don't know why I'm talking about that. So what would I like to do? I could get three clay it just depends how much I want to kind of hold my building back because the way this is going to work later in the round is for each of these buildings, you can give up goods. The round determines how many of each good you need to give up to move a building. So it's one good at the moment in round one. There are some conditions though. There are certain types of goods for each of these craftsmen. And then some have conditions. So the carpentry will take clay and rye but there has to be more clay than rye. So in round one, that basically means it's a clay to move carpentry. You can't use any rye. Brew house is the same, but for barley. So it costs one barley. Cooling house is a meat or a milk. Bake house is any of these three, but at the most you can only use one flax. That's important later on, of course. In round one, it doesn't matter because you can only spend one. And manufacture any of these three things. So if I only get one clay to fulfill my bonus, I have to spend this. Hmm. Oh no, I think I can make it work. Because I will get a clay from this. It's just, I was thinking of getting, I was thinking of spending two workers to get tools, and then one to get me a bit of clay, but then I wouldn't have this crops of the same type out yet. Hmm, I, th I think, 
Rather than trying to do all these things at once, I would like to get the clay. Maybe we just ignore getting the tools. Yeah, I'm going to plant. Do I want to use two up there and get fertilizing? Because then two of these can shoot up to the top. I want new things. I want new fields. I'm going to go in clearing for now. I'm going to get a new field in the two row and one clay. So my clay just moves up. My field goes in here. Remember, one per column. Marty wants some crops and some wool. So he is going to do small trade over here. Now, he's got no tools. So, so maybe he wants to save a couple to get, or at least to get one tool, because he's going to have some goods. So he is going to sheep gains plus one round. So that basically means you move one sheep over there. Uh, as soon as a sheep is moved from this six card, or whenever you get sheep in round four and onwards, they go straight into your uh, stables here, and they're worth a point at the end of the game, and they're safe. They're not going to die of uh, natural causes. So the sheep have gained a round. He's going to gain a wool, and then two crops. He is going to gain two hops. Okay, back to me. I want to plant some things. Do I want to use fertilizing, though, to just move things right up? It would be the last thing that I do. I definitely want to plant something. Do I want to do busy weekend? Maybe I do. Yeah, I would get a, a wool stroke milk as well. I'm going to plant two things. I want to start working towards having loads of this rye. So I'm going to plant rye up there. And then plant one more thing. Do we want it to be... Barley can be used in two things, and rye can be used in two things as well. I think I'm going to do barley in the number t in the number three slot there. Okay, and I can have a milk or a wool. Let's go wool. There we go. Now that is where Marty wanted to go to fulfill his card here. He could wait to do that. He has got all of these very effective fields right now that he would like to get things planted in. It would be pointless going for more sowing because he can't do it. I think it would be pointless going for fertilizing again. So is he going to wait? Is he going to get some other things? He's got no clay. It does mention in the rule book, don't you know, neglect your clay. Yeah, he's going, to, he's going to get some clay. Does he want four or... Th well, it's a silly question, isn't it? Does he want four or three? He'll have four. Come to the tool shed and grab four clay. So if I was going to do that, I can't have as much now. So come over here. He's got four clay now. Now my final worker, I think I do want to get some clay. I'm going to grab it while it's uh, kind of cheap. I do want some more tools, but it's going to have to wait. I'm just going to go for, let's go for three clay. Yeah, because clay's going to get expensive. Uh, so I'm going to have six, basically. So let's just grab that one and pop it there. Uh, so I am done. Marty's still got one more action. I think he's going to go for some tools. Now, he could go for a card and take first player away. And maybe it's worth doing that and not getting tools yet. You get a stables card, which is similar to these uh, these gateway cards. It's a bit harder to do them, though. Or you could go for a points card that's, you know, a, a long-term goal. I think, yeah, he is going to he's gonna go into the first round toolless, but he is going to get another points card. So let's see what he's ended up with. Five of five each of two types of goods. He has to give up, not just have, has to give up to get those points. But that's quite a lot of points there for the taking, if he can do it. So we finished our actions, keep going until everyone's used all their workers. Uh, then we grab the card that had our workers on it, and that goes into our hand. So give up a tool to get two milk for me. And Marty's is give up eight hops to get three back, three barley, and two bonus cards. So that should work quite well together with the plant two hops, right? Next up is uh, your laying fallow. So any empty fields move up one and then choose one of them to go up an extra one. Marty's going to have ended up wasting his time with this. Maybe not the best thing to have done. And seven is harvest. Anything that you have planted goes into the row that it's in, basically. So I've got four wheat for this. And then the field it was in goes down. It's one less effective. Barley goes over here. Field goes down. So remember like to do the... Move the field down as soon as you've moved the good off it so you don't forget which one it was. And Marty gets that but for flax. So he's got two very good fields going into next round. Then your sheep produce milk. One milk for every sheep. I lost mine somehow. Uh, so Marty is going to gain one milk for his solitary sheep. And now it's time, this can happen all together, it's time to spend goods on the craftsman. 
So I wanted to, and you can do this at any time, remember, I want to spend three clay to get a bonus card out. So I'm going to start, uh, yeah, I might lose room for all of this. I'm going, to st I'm going to tuck all of my bonus cards. Let's, let's start tucking them over here. So I'm going to get that in uh, phase three of each round now. I do I want to give up anything else? I don't have four tools. I could give up one tool to get a milk and it would two milk and it would get me an extra bonus card. I'll think about that. I don't know yet. And uh, three crops of the same type. If I give up three wheat, which isn't so useful in round one, I can use it in the bakehouse. But yeah, I'm going to give up three crops of the same type to get that bonus card out as well. So I, I'm going to be getting a, a nice little chunk of stuff at the start of each round. So what do I want to pay to do? I definitely want to pay one clay. Remember, it's one good in round one. One clay to move that forward. Uh, I can pay a barley to move that one forward. A meat, I've got loads of meat. to Move that one forward. And then we have to think, I've only got one wheat and one rye. So I want to spend barley for this, I think. Because... In my limited experience, I found you don't leave yourself with nothing of a, of a crop because you have to spend an action to go and get some more. Whereas if you keep at least one, you can just plant it and get a load more. Okay, So for the bottom one, I'm going to spend wool. Just slide that along there. I am tempted, you know. It's a gamble. I'm tempted to give up a tool just to get this milk that I don't particularly want so I can get a bonus card. Maybe I could do it and get another bonus for next round. I think that's too... Greedy though, too risky that I'm just you know, hoping that I draw a bonus card that I can miraculously just do straight away. I'm going to wait on that because I'm only two tools off getting this and then I can think about getting rid of some. So knowing that we've got the tools, let's use them. So it, it basically exhausts a tool. You don't lose them until the final round you lose them because any you don't use in the final round are worth points. A fifth of a point, in fact. Uh, so let, let's use them. Now clay... I think I want to use clay. I don't really want to use any of this stuff. So the brew house isn't moving. I've got loads of meat. The manufacturer could have hides as well. Let's see. What do I want to do? I definitely want to do clay. So let's slide clay down to one. You exhaust one tool and you move one boulder. So basically to move it one extra space, it costs you a tool. To move this again, I would have to have two more tools because now there's two boulders that need moving. So I'm not going to be able to do that. But I've got a load of meat, so let's spend that. Spend one meat, move that boulder with my second tool because I'm not giving it up. And I've moved that an extra one. Now, oh, what I should have done straight away, as soon as there is a gap, as soon as you've moved every building, uh, your cottage here automatically moves. And you can see now I will get seven workers each round. And it starts to reveal a bit of the village. That's not going to happen again until, you know, these three buildings have moved, but I've made a start and you're going to get points as you move them further and further and further. So I think that is it for me. Well, it has to be it for me because I do have some resources, but I have no more tools, so I can't move any of these boulders anymore. So that's it for me for phase nine. Let's look at Marty then. So he's got no tools, so one clay is OK. Uh, he's left himself, though. He's going to have to get crops, isn't he? He doesn't want to waste round one basically not putting stuff out and he can get more barley so this isn't such a terrible thing he needs a meat or a milk he's only got a milk uh he needs he hasn't got barley he's got loads of flax though so he'll just do do flax for these last things here uh he did want three and two wool he didn't manage to get that did he uh he did have a milk and a wool oh yeah so actually before we give up the milk he'll do this because it would get him a clay and uh, there's no reason not to. He doesn't have to spend the milk to do it. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Sorry, Marty. And the bonus card he gets from it is give up two sheep to get a sheep every round and five points at the end of the game. Hmm, that could be something to think about, especially since uh, these sheep are still vulnerable. Then finally, it's... He could give up the wool. Does he need... He still would like to have the wool. He has got a hide that he doesn't particularly need for anything. Or he could give up the flax that he's already got four of. I think he'll give up the flax he's already got four of. So he's got three of it now. He's got no tools, so no point thinking about anything else for him. Phase 10 is readjust your boulders. They basically need to be the same distance away from the buildings as they were at the start of the game. Two and four spaces away from each building. So for Marty, they'll look like that. And for me, they'll look like that. So there is round one 
of Hard Tower. I think I'm going to leave it there for part one of the video. I am going to play through the whole game, six rounds. So you can join me for part two that's linked in the description or it'll be coming up on the screen very shortly. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, YouTube-y things, like and subscribe and tell people about it. Spread the word somehow and uh, any support on Patreon would be massively appreciated. Thank you for watching this part though and I'll see you wherever you end up. Oh yeah, there's a first impressions video. Ah, I messed up the ending. Bye.